you know, I was just thinking about uh, telling us all um, uh, a little joke uh, about a rodent, uh, you know, uh, a rat or a mouse. Um, but um, on second thoughts, um, you know, I think uh, you might uh, find it a bit too cheesy. It's the way I tell them. Hi guys, welcome to another video. Hope you're all keeping well. Uh, now, uh, in this video, um, I thought I'd depart uh, temporarily from talking about um, horror movies and talk about um, horror horror literature. Uh, now, uh, when I say horror literature, uh, I'd like to uh, tell you my uh, top five uh, all-time James Herbert novels. Now, um, if you're not familiar with uh, James Herbert, um, I'll just give you a little bit of background on, on, on the writer. Now, James Herbert, uh, sadly, who sadly is no longer with us, uh, was Britain's number one horror writer. Now, um, his debut novel was The Rats, um, which was published in 1974. That was a novel that really sort of like got him on the road to sort of like, you know, uh, international fame and that, you know, yeah. And uh, ever since that first novel, The Rats, was published like, uh, you know, uh, Jim, God rest his soul, he went on to enjoy all oh, huge popularity all over the world. with fantastic horror novels and that, you know, yeah. Uh, and he's left a fantastic legacy, you know, with all his fantastic, not fantastic novels and that, you know, yeah. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'll just uh, run down my top five uh, all time James Herbert novels. Now, it, it was quite a difficult choice because there's loads of James Herbert novels, you know, uh, I like in that. But these are the main ones, guys. These are the top five, you know, uh, what, I, what I can go back to and read again and again. So uh, I'm going to start now at number five. And in uh, number five is Haunted. Uh, yeah, great uh, haunted house story and that, you know, yeah, first published in 1988 and that, uh, and it's the first book in the, in, in the David Ash trilogy. Uh, now, uh, David Ash was, was a character who Jim invented. Uh, he was a kind of a paranormal investigator and he carried a lot of emotional baggage, you know, and uh, yeah, really, uh, really good character and that, you know, and in Haunted, like, he goes to investigate this creepy country house called Edbrook and that, you know, uh, I won't go on too much about the story, just, you know, just in case you haven't, you know, just in case you haven't read it, but this is a real, you know, a good supernatural read, guys, like, you know, yeah, it really is, yeah, uh, yeah, published in 1988. And uh, it's not, not as gory as Jim's earlier books and that, you know, but it's still a very good read and that, you know, very, very subtle, supernatural, uh, you know, paranormal story about, you know, about ghosts and that, you know, and haunted houses and that, you know, and Jim's really on the money when he wrote this and that, you know, yeah, I read this book a few times and that, and it was subsequently adapted into a, you know, into a movie and that, you know, I've got that on DVD. Uh, yeah, the movie was very good as well, and that, you know, and Anthony Andrews was in it, and that, you know, yeah, so yeah, so that's number five on the top five James Herbert's list of, you know, novels, that is Haunted from 1988. Now, moving on to number four, guys, another equally fantastic Jim Herbert book, and that is The Dark. First read this in September 1980, uh, and oh, absolutely loved it, yeah, in, 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 in some ways, it's quite similar to The Fog, you know, the novel, uh, Jim's second novel, uh, the sense that where the fog came out of the ground and that and sense everybody crazy and that. But only in this book, it's a supernatural force. Uh, actually, uh, it's the dark becomes an actual moving, moving, creeping evil thing in that, you know. And it's basically, it's basically generated by this group of people uh, who commit, all commit suicide in this house in London and that in a road called Willow Road, you know, and, uh, you know, and when he commits suicide in the house, it unleashes this all evil substance called the dark which basically creeps around London and, you know, it affects people's minds, turns them evil and that, you know, and terrible, terrible things happen, just like in the fog, yeah, oh yeah, Jim's really on the money in this, guys, yeah, uh, some really horrific scenes and that, you know, uh, I'll give you an example, the inmates of an asylum sorted their attendance, the slimy tun tunnels of the London sewer system echoed with the dragging, the dragging footsteps of creatures that had once been human, but were now gathering to make war on mankind, yeah, I say it creeps around London like it's this living entity called the dark, and it's a great picture of Jim there on the back, guys, oh, he's a fantastic writer, yeah, still very, very sadly missed today, like by his legion of fans and that, yeah, but this is a cracking read, guys, this, I've read this quite a few times and that, and as I say, it, it's, it, it's similar to The Fog, but in other respects, it's quite different in that, you know, some of the scenes are really horrific and that, you know, yeah, and uh, so that's it, yeah. So that's number four in the top five all time top five Jim Herbert novels. That is The Dark from 1980. Now, I'm going to move on to number three. And number three is the sequel to The Rats, and that is Lair. 
Space Red Destiny in the summer of 1979. Oh, and I couldn't put it down, guys, yeah. It's a fantastic sequel to The Rats, yeah. Um, this is where the rats move into Epping Forest. It, it, it takes place four years after the outbreak, which was which was the term given uh, in the first book, the rats to the plague of you know the plague of rats that overran London and that you know and let people alive. This is a re equally gory read, guys. Yeah, yeah. As I say, they, they go into Epping Forest and they breed all over again and that you know and and of course it starts up all over again and that you know they attack people and there's some really gruesome set pieces in this, guys. Yeah, it's a fantastic story. Yeah. There you go, there's the back. And I love this cover, guys, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely lovely, yeah, um, yeah. He actually made a third Rats novel, Domain, like, but that is not in this in this top five and that, you know, but, yeah. Uh, that was quite good, but it wasn't as good as the first two rap books, yeah. But absolutely lovely, yeah. Read it many, many times and that, yeah. But a word of warning, it, 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 well, it's like I don't, don't really think I need to tell you this. If, if you don't like Rats, stay clear of this book, guys, because... It's a very, very stomach churning uh, read, it really is. The way the rats attack the people in Epping Forest and that, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very good sequel to the rats, yeah. Jim was really on the money when he when he wrote this, yeah. So there you go. That's the, that, that's a uh, lay from 1979. Now, number two in my all-time top five James Herbert novels is The Fog. Now, uh, oh, I could sit here all afternoon uttering superlatives about this. Oh, absolute tour de force of a horror novel. It's basically, uh, as I said before about the dark, uh, it concerns this force that sort of like spreads all over the country and that and turns people into, into homicidal, you know, murderous maniacs and that, yeah. Now, there's one particular scene in this novel that has become really notorious over the years. Um, it, 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 I won't, don't want to give away too much about it in case you haven't read it, but it concerns a school gymnasium and that you know, and it, a coach load of a uh, coach load of pupils like when they go on go on a trip and that the fog that the the, the, the the bus crashes, you know, and the fog, uh, the inhale of fog and that you know, and of course like it, it you know they're affected by the fog and that you know yeah, and he's sort of like they're in the gym and that you know doing that their exercise and that. And uh, all of a sudden, they stop, they stop and that, you know, and I, I don't, I said, I don't want to go on too much about it, but obviously the fog is beginning to take its toll and that, and what they do to their teachers, guys, yeah, yeah, but you'll have to read, read it, like, to see what I mean, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I think the particularly, particularly notorious scene with the garden shears, well, yeah, but I say I don't want to go on too much about that, I'll let you read it, yeah, but getting back to the general uh, story of this, guys, yeah, I said, it's basically this fog, that comes out of the ground and that, you know, and it, yeah, it's like a yellowishy, yellowishy, it's like a fog, like a yellowishy tinge to it, yellow, yellowishy green fog and that, you know, and it, if you come into contact with it, like, you know, it sends you a dual alley basically and that, you know, yeah, oh, it's a gripping read, I've read this many, many times, James Herbert's second novel, yeah, from 1975, yeah, and look at that, guys, look at that at the back. Look at the blade, for goodness sake, don't leave this on Aunt Edna's chair. That sums up this novel to the letter. This, if you love horror novels, like with a kind of little bit of a science fiction element, highly recommend The Fog, yeah. Oh, yeah. Real, some really horrific scenes in this, guys, yeah. No wonder Jim became, you know, such a popular author and that, you know, yeah. Writing stories like this, yeah. Real horrific stories and that. And the type of, the real page turn is, you mean, you don't want to, you don't want to put the book down until you've read, you know, you've read what, what's going to happen in that, you know, yeah. And the way, and there's one particular scene as well where um, it's, it's, I don't, I say, I don't want to give away too many of the set pieces. But there's another particular scene aside from the school gymnasium, gymnasium scene, a gymnasium scene, where this crowd of people, this girl's going to commit suicide. And what happens is she walks into the sea at Bournemouth, but then to, uh, from what I can remember, it's a while since I read it. I think she changes her mind and comes back. But as she's coming back to the shore, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that's been affected by the fog. And they're all walking towards the sea. And it's that many people packed together in this, oh, this human wall. This human wall of infected people. She just can't get past them all. The girl, poor girl, just can't get past them. You know, she can't sort of like, you know, get over, you know, get past them. Like, yeah, but she ends up getting drowned and that, you know, because they sort of like, there's that many people packed together, like a football stadium. She ends up drowning and that, oh yeah, oh yeah. And not only does the fog affect uh, humans, guys, it also affects animals as well. I mean, there's one scene where um, the pigeons turn on their own. Yeah, but I don't want to, again, I don't want to give away too much about it. Just get this book, guys, and read it. If you haven't read it, highly recommend this. The Fog, one of Jim's greatest novels, and that is number two in my all-time top five James Herbert novels, The Fog, from 1975. Ah, now we come to the number one. 
the number one. I'm beginning to sound like one of the uh, Radio 1 DJs, aren't I? Top of the pops. It's number one time, guys. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, before I show you the novel, um, again, I could sit here all afternoon uttering superlatives about this. Actually, it's my all-time favourite horror novel. Yeah, the one that inspired me to becoming a horror writer myself. Fantastic novel I have read countless times over the years. First read it in 19... <coughs> Excuse me. I first read it in September 1975. And from that moment on, I became an instant James Herbert fan. And that novel is... The Rats. Guys, if you're looking for a horror novel that's got everything to pull out, all the stops, no holes barred and that, you know, in terms of animals on the rampage, you will really enjoy The Rats if you haven't read it. As I say, I first read this novel in 19, September 1975 after I saw it in the local library and a school friend recommended it. He said, that book, he said, you've got to read that book. He said, it's a real gory read and that, you know, yeah. Now, um, oh God, he was right as well. Yeah, yeah, all scenes of horror. I mean, these rats, like what happens is, I, I don't want to give away too much of the story, but what happens is this uh, biologist, he, he comes into the country and he brings this rat in from abroad and basically the rat, this foreign rat, it makes up with a, with, a, with an English rat and it, cause, it causes a mutant strain and he breathes like wildfire, you know, really viral and that, you know, and before you know it, you've, London's overrun by rats as big as dogs. Can you imagine that? Rats as big as dogs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a horrific read, guys, yeah. Oh, I mean, with it in the cinema and that, you know, and the girl, the girl's sitting there with her boyfriend and she's something's on her foot and that, you know, and she keeps scratching her foot. Next minute she looks down and, oh, all the floor of the cinema is packed with rats. I mean, you know, this is the sort of book this is, guys. It's a real punch in your face horror story yeah you know uh, as stephen king uh, once said in, in one of his books I think it was dance macabre james here but not only he not only writes horror he goes out and out with his combat boots and really gives it you and that you know really assaults your senses and that you know and he's really on the money with this the rats it says yeah this is the book that launched james herbert's on the road you know to, to, to fame and fortune as britain's number one horror writer the rats yeah oh yeah I, I, this is a fantastic read guys i mean it really is yeah there you go Highly recommend The Rats, yeah. This is undoubtedly my number one Jim Herbert novel. Yeah, The Rats. Yeah, when he first wrote it, like, um, you know, um, he didn't think, you know, he sort of like done it. He was working in an advertising agency and he said to his wife one day, I think I'll write a novel and that, you know. So he, he started writing it, at, you know, when he wasn't working, like during weekends and evenings and that. And he sent it off. Uh, and from, you know, from what I've read about in, in Jim's interviews, it was rejected by five publishers and it was accepted by the, the sixth one, New English Library, yeah. And oh, can I imagine how, how, how made it, how made up he must have been? Where you know when he got that acceptance and that you know, it, probably akin to, probably akin to the feeling Stephen Stephen King had when he heard the carry had been been accepted by I think it was Doubleday. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, getting back to the rats. Yeah, this is rightly, rightly my number one Jim Herbert novel. You know, it stands head and shoulders above all the other novels and that, you know. I think, it, I, I even think it stands head and shoulders above my, all the other horror novels, you know, I've ever read and that, you know, yeah. It's a, my number one read, The Rats, yeah. Oh, yeah, just look at that cover, guys, yeah. That's the original cover, the original paperback cover. Uh, I had, the one I read in 1975, uh, I got it from the library and see where it's got the red letter in there. It had The Rats there, but as Jim became more popular... Uh, in you know towards the uh, mid mid 70s late 70s he started putting his name in a more prominent position you know because obviously he was really famous then and that you know and he got stronger and str his popularity increased with each new book he, he brought out and that yeah but oh this is a fantastic book the rats yeah and they actually made a movie of this a couple of years later called deadly eyes which i don't think jim was too keen on because uh, from what I can gather from what he said in his interviews, what they've done, they use little dashing dogs and he put like sort of like uh, rats, rat, rat, rat fur over them, like, you know, fake rat fur to make them look like rats and that, yeah. And I believe some of them were, <laughs> some of them were running around barking and yapping and that, you know, yeah. Never hear the rat do that, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So there you go, guys. That's my number one James Herbert novel of all time, The Rats, first published in 1974 and the one that made Jim, Jim Herbert a big, big star in the world of horror fiction. Yeah, as I say, still very much miss Jim today and that, you know, we always used to look forward to a new James Herbert book coming out. And sometimes what I, what I used to do, I couldn't wait for the paperback to come out. 
I'd buy the hardback and that. Of course, like hardbacks are quite expensive, like you know, in those days and that, you know, yeah. But now obviously you get discounts in, in some some of the supermarkets. But yeah, I remember the dark and that, ordering the dark and that. And wait, in 1980, and I kept going to the library saying, is the dark in yet? Is the dark in yet? So in the end, I thought, oh, you know, to hell with it. I'll buy it, like, you know, so that's sort of done, yeah. Then, of course, I bought the paperback when it came out, yeah. But I say, Jim's Jim's written many, many fine horror books in his career, but his earlier ones, they, they were the ones that really sort of, like, carved his name in the world of explicit horror, you know. And, and, and I, I love the way he does the little set pieces. He, he introduces... As well as the, the hero, the main, uh, you know, protagonist, he introduces the minor characters, you know, like little set pieces and that, you know, and then he kills them off in the most gruesome ways fashionable. I mean, he does this quite a lot in The Rats and, and, and a lot in The Fog as well, yeah. Uh, for example, oh, there's one particular scene in this, what, there was a little bit of controversy over. Um, I don't want to go on too much about it, but it was involved like a toddler and that, and Jim, he was wondering about whether he should have put that in the book and that, he was involved in the rats, yeah, yeah, but I don't want to go on too much about that, yeah, but getting back to the general the general opinion of this book, guys, it's a real, I mean, I finished it in two days, I enjoyed it that much and that, you know, it really it really made a lasting impression on me. The only other the only other rap novel I could pick that comes near to this is Ratman's Notebooks, which was the movie, which was the book, uh, that spawned uh, the Willard movie in the early 70s starring Bruce Davidson but even that can't come up to this the rats yeah it's out now it's horror and the rats are monstrous creatures and they're headed by this big ooh horrible mutant rat with two heads yeah yeah but again I don't want to go on so much about it and get, if you haven't read the rats yeah so there you go guys that's me top five uh, James Herbert novels so just to recap number five is Haunted Number four, The Dark. Number three, Lair, Fantastic Sequel to the Rats. Number two, The Fog, Steer Clear of Garden Shears. And the biggie, the big number one, The Rats. So there you go, guys. That's my top five James Herbert novels. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Are you a James Herbert fan? Do you agree with my choice? What's your top five Jim Herbert novels? Leave a comment down below. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. God rest his soul. He was a fantastic writer. He really was, yeah. And, uh, yeah, still very, very sadly missed today. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it for now. Yeah, hope you're all keeping well. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you like the video, please feel free to share, subscribe, comment. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, look after yourselves and that. Yeah, I say stay safe. And it all going well. I'll talk to you again in the next video. Cheers, guys.